Hi everyone, it's Sam from SiteMate. In this video, we're going to look at how our lists section uh, can be used in conjunction with the templates and analytic sections inside of Dash Pivot. Now, the list section is designed to be the source of truth for things like lists of personnel or lists of uh, plant, cost codes, subcontractors, any of that. And what it allows us to do is we're going to refer to those lists from within any of our form templates that we set up in the template section. So as an example, we could have a drop down menu that refers to the values that are actually in this list. And we can uh, use the same list in multiple uh, templates or multiple places within the same template because it's set up as a standardized list. And because it standardizes the way that we capture information, it allows us to find records faster using our register view and allows us to apply filters and breakdowns in the analytics section. So in this video, we're going to look at how all of this uh, works together as a system. And we're going to focus on our list of plant and equipment here. So in the list section, we already have a list of plant and equipment. If we open it up, we'll see that we already have a list of all of our equipment in here. Uh, we've even got properties for the serial numbers, the, when the next service is due, any service record attachments, things like that. Um, the way to set up other properties uh, is covered in a separate video. Uh, the main thing is that we already have a list created and it contains some list items already. So once that's set up, uh, we can then use that in our template section. So if we go to, for example, if we go to a site diary, uh, you can see that if we edit our site diary template, we're already using this list in our table that we're using to track plant hours. So if we scroll down, you can see we have a table here and you can see that it's called plant. And the first column, uh, is for selecting a piece of plant from a drop-down list. So you can see we're using a list here and it's linked to our plant and equipment list, which has already been set up. This is great because we don't have to recreate a list of plant and equipment within this template. Instead, we're just going to refer to a list that we've already set up. And I just want to point out that we can actually use the uh, this list uh, in both list cells, like we're doing in this table, but we can also use it in a dedicated list field. So I'm just going to drag one of those in and show you. Uh, we can actually, when we're selecting the list source, we want to link to a list and we can select our list of plant and equipment. You can see it gives us a preview of some of the values. And already you can see that we can use that list, that single list that we created, we can use it in multiple places and then use this list in multiple templates as well. So I'm not going to save uh, any of the changes that we've made here, but I want to show you, I want to show you uh, how much of a difference this actually makes when you're filling out a form. So in this case, a site diary, uh, we actually already have some records that have already been created. So we're going to look at those. You can see here our register. If I just open up one of these forms that's already been filled out and scroll down to the table where we have our plant, you can see that uh, when we go to enter this information, it's a simple drop down. So we've got all those values that we saw on the uh, in the list section. You can see that we've got a list of all of the different pieces of plant and equipment. Uh, so it makes it much easier to input the information into Dash Pivot. And there's a couple of flow on benefits here. So uh, we'll come back to it in just a moment, but just want you to make a note that this uh, list item that's been selected in this row is also linked to this value here. So the total number of hours. We have a formula set up so that it auto calculates the hours based on the start and finish time. But I just want you to note uh, for later that the list item is linked to this number. Cool. So uh, that makes it much easier to fill out uh, information in our template section, in our forms. Um, once we've created all of those records, uh, because the information's been uh, collected in a standardized way, uh, we can also apply some filters in our register uh, to find information more quickly. So I'll show you that if we scroll across and find our list of plant, here it is. We can see that 
uh, we've got all of the values from all of our uh, daily diaries displayed here and we can actually apply a filter. So if we only wanted to find the records that uh, used the uh, VAC truck, we can select the VAC truck, apply a filter, and then it will return only the records where the VAC truck was selected in that drop-down list in any of our forms. So now we're only looking at the forms where the VAC truck was selected uh, in that column. Uh, so here you go, you can see we've got uh, VAC truck selected a bunch of times. So that's really the, the impact that it has for the template section. So number one, makes it easier to fill out the information. Number two, uh, makes it much easier to find information. I now want to talk about how this works in relation to the analytics. So in our analytics section, we have some dashboards set up already. And one of our dashboards is called plant and labor. So I'm just going to click on that one. We already have some charts in here. And we can see that we have one for tracking plant hours by vehicle. So if we click on that, we can see that uh, we have some information displayed. But if we go to the settings block, I just want to run through how this relates to the list section. So we can see that the source of our information is our site diary. The field is our plant table. And the column uh, which we're tracking is our uh, total plant hours. So that was that formula column that we looked at that was automatically calculated. That's where the information is coming from. But if we look on this side of the settings, you can see that we are actually breaking the information down by the plant item, which is the name of that first column where we were using our drop down list for plant and equipment. So that would not be an option in here if we were just using a, using a text uh, field. Uh, it's only available if we have the information being captured in that standardized way using our list cell. Um, great, so you can see that here. We can uh, use that as the breakdown. Uh, it's also handy. We can apply filters by this value as well. So we can say let's filter and only look at the information for the VAC truck. So let's filter by plant item equals VAC truck. And here you can see, uh, we're now only looking at the values for the VAC truck uh, over time. And we can select multiple list values or apply multiple filters for different lists uh, and, and different list values. By using lists, we're really enhancing our ability to drill into the data that we capture uh, using our analytics section. Um, so that's how the list section works in conjunction with the template section and the analytics section. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about other functionality that we have, uh, definitely head to the tutorial section on the Dash Pivot website. If you get stuck with anything or have any questions, you can always reach our team via live chat, both on the Dash Pivot website and in the Dash Pivot app. And so I hope this video has been useful and thanks for watching.